Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer. I'm super excited today. I know, <laughs> before you say anything, I know that my beautiful little scarf thingy does not match my top. I know this. It's alright. Because this is the pattern for today and I wanted to show you what it looked like on me. Um, it's not going to stay on me for long because I'm going to show you, but today's yarn, I got all excited I got myself winded. <laughs> Today's yarn is Premier Momenti. I have shown this in the past. This specific length of scarf took one cake of this. There are lots of ways to alter this pattern to make it longer, to make it skinnier, to... I need to... I forgot to grab the pattern. Hang on. <laughs> A little ditzy today. All right, so... I talked to you about this pattern. This pattern is off Premier Yarns website. It is a scarf slash wrap. It is called the Una Maxi Wrap. This pattern is available for free on PremierYarns.com. I will link it below. And it says it the patterns that I use off Premier Yarns website suggest a specific yarn. I changed that up entirely. <laughs> I like to use what yarn I want to use, not what they suggest. So this, the pattern, the original pattern, calls for Premier Yarn Sweet Roll, which you could absolutely, if you don't want the Momenti, but I suggest the Momenti because it's beautiful, you could use the new Sweet Yarn Sweet Rolls Fruits. Totally would suggest that. I, I'm kind of thinking I want to do that anyway, but that's another, that's another video. <laughs> Today we're talking about the Momenti. So... Premier Yarns, I don't know if you know this, has a lot of free patterns on their website. I like to feature Premier Yarns patterns during Premier Week because a lot of people don't know they have free patterns. And so I feature some of their patterns. I give a tutorial with permission, of course. I don't suggest ever stealing somebody's pattern and doing a tutorial and pretending it's yours. Don't do that. That's not good. I did ask permission ahead of time to use these. I have permission to use these. <laughs> This pattern is super, super easy. It makes a beautiful scarf. You don't have to wear it up around your neck like this. Like I said, it, you can make it any width. And I do talk about how to alter the pattern because they give you the multiples in that pattern in the tutorial. You can make this thinner, less multiples. It'll be thinner this way. And it will make a much longer scarf or wrap, if you will. If you make it this width... You can also just put it over your shoulders. This goes down about elbow length to me. So I can absolutely just, that's my bird clock. I can throw it over my shoulders. I could put a little button there. I could also connect it in the round if I want, which I do talk about in the tutorial, and make a infinity scarf. So this is the pattern that we're using. Well, you know what? I'll talk about the yarn first, and then I'll show you the, the wrap. This is... Premier Momenti. It is 437 yards. It is a 200 gram ball. Did I mention yet that all of the yarns I'm featuring dur during Premier Week are 20% off on Premier's website? Yes, they are. Thank you, Premier. <laughs> this one is the colorway Meadow. The one that I did the tutorial pattern out of is Desert Vista absolutely beautiful um it's not coming up as peach as it is like this is a very peachy brownish color it's very peachy it's not showing up on camera that way and i don't know why and this is like a rosy brown it's gorgeous and it goes from the rosy brown to the peachy brown to this beautiful I'm going to call it a turquoise, turquoise color. And then back to the peachy. Back to the... Actually, that's a different color entirely. <laughs> and then finally, it rounds out to the same color we started with. So, beautiful, beautiful color. I had a lot of fun making this. This yarn is a chain spun yarn. It is chain spun. If you can see that, it is very, very soft. 
It is a medium number four. It's 58% cotton, 42% acrylic. Hand wash, cold, lay flat to dry. That's why we made a scarf. This is going to be easy to hand wash. And the way that I hand wash stuff is I make soapy water. I don't put soap on the garment. The only reason you need to put soap on the garment is if you have like a stain or something. I put soap in the water. I mix the water up. I push this in. I soak it. I squish it a little bit to get the soapy water to go into the the fibers. I let it soak. I pull it up. I squeeze all the water out. I run fresh clean water. I rinse it into the clean water. I let it soak. I pull it up. I let it soak in the water, the clean water. I squeeze all the water out and then I, you can lay it flat to dry. But because I don't mind my garment stretching a little bit, I will just hang this over like the banister outside in my yard and I let it hang dry. <laughs> you can also lay it flat on a rack to dry. Um, I have a dog cage that is clean. So sometimes I will lay garments over the dog cage and it will, you know, dry that way. It's not hard to hand wash garments. The hardest part is squeezing the water out if you have like arthritis in your hands, which I do, but not difficult. This pattern is very, very easy, very well written. Um, it is split shells. That's upside down. <laughs> it's split shells with a post in between, so a double crochet. It's very easy. It's beautiful. It has a nice lightweight feel to it so that you can keep your shoulders a little warm but like it's not going to overheat you you can wear this as a cowl like you saw at the beginning of the video where i just wrapped it around my neck and it will keep you warm because cotton does keep you warm and so does the acrylic there's acrylic in there too so this yarn is very soft just you don't want to throw it in the washer and dryer and it will fuzz up or shrink on you because cotton does do that so just treat it like and honestly because it's a scarf it's a wrap you don't need to wash it that often it's not like a baby blanket that needs to be washed because babies you know spit drool pee on stuff it's not like that you shouldn't you shouldn't get it so sweaty or gross or like dirty from wearing it that you're gonna have to wash it frequently which is why i chose to make a wrap out of the momenti anytime you have a hand wash garment just keep in mind like you can make beautiful shawls out of a hand wash garment because they're easy to wash. They're not like going to get dirty a lot. Shawls, shawls can go months without being washed. And then if they get a little, you know, musty, you just do a quick little wash. It's not a big deal. I don't mind hand washing garments. And this to me, this yarn is well worth it. It works up so nice. It's got really beautiful... I mean, I wouldn't call it stitch definition, but it has like a beautiful, like just fluffiness to it. I just think it's beautiful. It's soft, it's squishy, and I just like the way it feels. And this makes a really good, and we're coming up on spring and summer here where I live in the United States. And so this is a perfect spring summer garment because it's not going to make me overheated. It's not going to, you know, it'll keep me warm when I need it, and it's not going to overheat me when I don't need it. So. I really like the Momenti yarn. I have also made an Ashley cowl, which is another one of my patterns from this yarn, and it worked out beautifully. It is gorgeous. And I really like, my favorite part of the Momenti is the way that the colors fade into each other. So as you see, there's not hard color breaks, you know? It kind of starts to fade and then gently fades into the next color. And even going between the pink and the blue, it fades into the blue. There's not a harsh break. There's not a harsh color stoppage. It's just absolutely beautiful. I love, that's my favorite part of the Momenti is the way the colors fade into each other. I just love it. And it comes in beautiful, all different colors. There's purples, there's blues, there's this gorgeous yellow color, and then this, which is, browns are not usually my color palette at all, but because there's that blue in there and that little bit of peachiness, this is totally my jam totally my jam and it lends on the side of neutral but it still has that pop of color in there yeah you can also just wear it around your neck if you want or you can make it a cowl and flip it around and wear it twice <laughs> like i said the tutorial is really easy to follow this pattern is really easy 
So if you're going to make the tutorial with me, I suggest downloading the pattern. Even if you struggle with reading patterns, uh, that's why I do patterns that are written out along with the tutorials. Because even if you have trouble, you struggle reading patterns, if you follow along with the written pattern while I'm doing the tutorial, and this is true for all tutorials that have patterns to go with them, if you do them along with each other, it will help you to better understand why things are written the way they're written in the pattern form. And it helps you to understand how to read a pattern. That's how I learned how to read a pattern. Um, another amazing podcaster here on YouTube, Jada and Stitches, she has patterns and tutorials to go along with the written patterns. That's how I learned how to read a pattern. Is I would follow the pattern while watching the tutorial, and then I was like, oh, that's what that means. <laughs> so that's why that's why I do it that way. Because I want you guys all to have all of the access to all of the patterns and tutorials on the world. You can go and get free patterns and learn how to read them. So that's why we do, that's part of the reason we do premieres, patterns during premiere week. Is so that, you know, no more. You can also drape it over your head if you want to be pretty like that. You know, you're a little bit cold. Oh, that's so pretty. That is so pretty. Look at that. I love that. <laughs> I love that. It's so beautiful. So lots of ways to wear this wrap. So check out Premiere Mo Premier Momenti. And please stay tuned for the tutorial for that beautiful wrap after I say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching and um, I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. All right, let's get down to this. Now, I may have already told you this information, but Today we are working with the, I already know I showed you the yarn because I did an intro, but we're working with the Momenti yarn. The colorway that I am using is Desert Vista. I think this is a very pretty color. Um, I am showing you a pattern from PremierYarns.com. You see it says their website right here. They have lots and lots of free patterns. And the reason I like showing you guys these patterns is several reasons. I don't think a lot of people realize that Premiere has free patterns. I also think a lot of people don't realize that maybe like this says this, this is made for Premiere Yarn Sweet Roll, but we're using a different yarn and you can absolutely change what yarn they recommend. They just, they do these patterns to give you an idea of what to do with specific yarns that they release. You do not have to use that one. Just try to use patterns that are the same size. So the Sweet Roll is a number four. Momenti is a number four. It's a worsted weight yarn. So it is completely an interchangeable pattern. Now we're going to take a look at the pattern. I suggest, I'm going to link this below, that you go and print this off so that you can follow along. You see I wrote Momenti. I wrote that this is going to be a tutorial. Um, it says that we need... 541 yards um two cakes of the premier sweet roll now because this is a one row repeat which means every row is going to be exactly the same we don't necessarily need the exact measurement of yarn for this because you can stop at any time you can make this as long or as short as you want it our goal is to use the entire cake of yarn so when we're out of the yarn, we're done. We can fasten off, and that's the end of it. And even this says, it says crochet until it's 65 inches and then fasten off. If it's not 65 inches, it's not going to be a big deal. We're wearing this as a scarf. I mean, you could wear it as a wrap. You absolutely could. You can also change how wide you make this. If you want it to be a longer scarf, you can make it a narrower scarf, and it will be longer. Or you can get two cakes a moment. I mean, whatever. Um, and then... Here's the stitch guide. The stitch guide describes the type of stitch that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing columns and fans. So if you look at the photograph here, the column is in between the, and these are actually split shells. These aren't just fans. These are split shells. These are so easy to make. And then we have a double crochet column in between. So it's going to go split shell, column, split shell, column. So... That is the information here. And it says multiple of eight stitches plus one plus three for the turning chain. Really, it should say multiples of eight plus four. Um, and, and that's where a lot of people get confused. Is like multiples of eight plus one plus three. What does that mean? 
So if you want to make this any width, you can make this baby blanket width. You can make this shirt width. Like you could take this pattern and turn it into anything. You would just need to have the number easily divisible by eight. So if it divides by eight evenly, you can use that. And then just at the end, you add four. And that counts as the first four stitches of the very first row. So our first four, those four are going to be like a double crochet chain one. And that will be the very first column and the chain one between the shell. So every row is going to be like that. So we can, we can alter this pattern as thick as we want, as thin as we want, as long as we want, as short as we want. You can turn this into a cowl instead of a wrap. If you only want to go maybe four or five feet and connect it in the round, you'll have a really awesome, like, infinity cowl. Okay, and then it says the setup. This this is the setup for the first row. Um, what you're going to have to do is come all the way over here for the wrap. You chain 100. I, I wish that this was laid out a little bit better so that it says over here that you need to chain 100 and then go into the setup in the row one. But, I mean, it's okay. This pattern suggests a four millimeter hook for this. But when I attempted to do the four millimeter, or the, the chain 100 with my hook, because the four millimeter is a little bit too small for this yarn or else you're going to have a lot of splitting and tangling up on your hook. So I moved up to a six millimeter hook. And because I moved up to a six millimeter hook, we're actually going to chain 68 instead of 100. Because when I chained 100, it was like 33 inches wide and it's supposed to be 18 inches wide. But when we chain 68, it's actually about 20 inches wide with the six millimeter hook. So that's where we're starting at today is we're going to chain 68 and that will be 64 is the multiple of eight. And then we add four, which equals 68. So we're going to do, we're going to chain 68. 64 is the multiple of eight. Um, we're going to start at 68. So I apologize. I apologize. Um, I didn't read that clearly enough that that was supposed to be a four hook. I grabbed the hook that went with the yarn and that was my mistake. So we're going to start with a chain of 68. All right, I got 68 now. Now we'll measure it because this seems more reasonable. <laughs> All right, we're at 20 inches now. That's much more reasonable for the width of a wrap. That was entirely my fault. I apologize. So we chain the 68 and in the eighth stitch from the hook, we are going to put a shell because these extra stitches here are going to count as a double crochet chain one and then the stitches we're supposed to skip. So this is going to act as our post and our chain one and the spaces that we have to skip before we reach the split shell. And to get the split shell, which they're calling a fan, we need to put two double crochet in the eighth stitch from the hook, chain one, and two more double crochet in that same stitch. And that is going to be the starter of our row. So this is acting as a double crochet, chain one. This is gonna be the post. These are the stitches we would skip between the post and the shell. We're going to chain one and skip the next three stitches. One, two, three. Put a double crochet into the fourth. We're going to chain one. 
skip three more stitches one two three and in the fourth we are going to put another split shell or a fan as they're calling it so two double crochets chain one two double crochets chain one so now we have post shell post shell or fan they're calling it a fan they're calling it a fan we're going to do this all the way across until we get to the end we're going to skip one two three double crochet into the fourth chain one now it's time for a fan two three four i'll put a fan which is two double crochets chain one two double crochets Chain one, two, three, four. Let's go into the fourth stitch, put a double crochet. Chain one, we'll skip one, two, three, and in the fourth, we're going to put a fan. This is a really, really easy pattern. Very beginner friendly. However, it has ways to make that, I mean, you don't have to just make this into a wrap. You can make this into a scarf. You can make it, you can make it um, shorter and connect it in the round and make it a uh, infinity cowl. One, two, three, four. Into the fourth, we're going to put a double crochet. Chain one. One, two, three, four. Put a fan. Two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Chain one, one, two, three, four. Put a double crochet, chain one, three, four. In the fourth stitch, we'll put another fan. No, nope, I think I did a chain two there. It's only a chain one. Two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Chain one. One, two, three, and four. Put a double crochet. One, two, three, and four. Put a shell. A split shell. A fan. Whatever you want to call it. I have always called these a split shell. Chain one. Skip three. And in the fourth, put a double crochet. Chain one. One, two, three, four. I feel like I miscounted my stitches somewhere. <laughs> I definitely miscounted. So I'm going to fudge it. I'm going to fudge it. I'm going to put a split shell. Chain one. Split shell. I'm going to pretend that I have four last stitch is left chain one and then in the very last stitch we're going to put a double crochet i totally messed up mine but that's all right so this is what we should have this is what it should look like and every row going up we are just going to pretty much do this but i will show you how to set up that row now here comes the repeat for this and every single row from here on forward, it is going to be exactly the same. We're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Oops. That is going to count as our column chain one. Okay. And then in the 
chain one space of the split shell, we are going to put a split shell. So we're going to put two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, I'm going to chain one, and in the top of that column, we're going to put a double crochet. Chain one, and then in the center, that chain one space of the shell or the fan, we're going to put another fan. So two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. I'm going to chain one. And then the top of the column, we're going to put a column, which is just a single, not a single, a double crochet, chain one. Go to the top of the shell stitch, put two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, chain one. Don't forget your chain ones in between the shells and the columns. Put a column in, chain one. Put a fan in the top of the fan. Chain one, two double crochet. Okay. Don't forget your chain one after the shell. And put a column in. Chain one. We're just going to do this over and over and over again. Shells in top of shells. Columns in top of columns. We're going to start every row with a chain four because that counts as a column. We're going to end every row in a column. Oops. It's almost to the end. And you can do this in any width or any length that you prefer. You want to put a column in. Chain one and put a fan in. Every time I say put a fan in, I think put a fan in the window. Well, that's kind of what you're doing. You're putting a fan in the fan window. The little chain one space can be a fan window. Put a fan in the window. And then we get to the end. Remember, there is a chain four because we have the three for the column and the chain one. So we're going to go over here. We're not going to go in this very first chain one space that's touching the fan. We're going to go into the next one. And we're going to put our column. Although, you know what? If you want and you're having a hard time going there, you can absolutely just go in this hole and put a, put a column there and then chain one. That would probably be easier. Or you could put it into the third chain from down here. Okay, this is what we have so far. Every row is going to be exactly the same. So we're going to chain, already chained one, two, three, and four. Turn our work. That's our column. Then we're going to go into the window and put a fan in the window. That's how we're going to remember that now. We're going to put a fan in the window. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, Chain one, put a column in. And there you go. It's easy peasy. Just keep doing the same row repeat until you have it the length that you want. If you want this to be a cowl, you go like four or five feet and sew it up and you'll have an infinity scarf. I am going to just continue this pattern until I run out of yarn. And then I'm going to have a nice little wrap or a uh, a lightweight cowl or a lightweight scarf if you will um 
Patterns are not, they're not difficult. I mean, they can be difficult to read. They can be very hard to read. But that's why we started with a easy level pattern that is easy to follow along, that is easily manipulated so that we can get it to the size we want by using the hook that we want. Um, yeah, I will be back when I get much, much further in this cake and I will check in with you guys. All right, so we are back. We are almost done. Clear off a little bit of room on my desk. Uh, we are almost done. I'm really happy with the way this colorway turned out. I'm on the wrong end. The way this colorway turned out. I'll show it to you in a minute. I just want to show you. Um, the end of this tutorial is exactly like we've been doing for all of these rows. The end is just going to end like this. So when you get out of yarn, when you're out of yarn, make sure you have enough to take it all the way to the end. And then you're done. It's it's easy. There are, like I said, there are alternatives. Now, what you can do if you wanted to make this a cowl is you can just line up. You can line up the ends from the beginning row and the last row. And you can sew these together or you can even crochet these together. Like do a single crochet or a slip stitch to join it and you would have a beautiful cowl which I may do because these colors are the same like it started and end with the same color so like for me that would be a beautiful cowl and I'm there's a good chance I'm probably going to end up doing that uh, this shawl at this point is just about my wingspan so um yeah I have just enough to either do one row left or to sew it up it's just about my wingspan, so I'm still debating whether I want to. By the way, I'm five foot nine, so my wingspan is five foot and nine inches. I think this would make a really nice cowl, but I, I don't know. I'm debating. I'm debating. I think I'm gonna put on one more row, and if I decide to sew it up later, I can. Two, three, four. I've actually had a lot of fun making this pattern. It has only taken me two days. But like two days, I'm not sitting and crocheting for two full days. It's two days off and on. So really only a few hours to make this entire scarf. I think if I were to make this again, I would make it more narrow so that I can get more length out of it. And remember, just to if we want to make it more narrow and longer, all you have to do is adjust it by multiples of eight. So I would probably take off 16 stitches from, what did we start with? 68, so I'll do 68 minus 16. And that would be my, my, um, my chain row. I keep wanting to say cast on, but it's not cast on. <laughs> so. Very easy pattern. Premier Yarns has lots of very easy patterns on their website. Very easy to follow. They do have all levels of patterns. They have intermediate. They have, you know, different levels of patterns. So whatever your skill level is, they have that. For me, I like to do easier patterns for you guys because I do get a lot of beginners here on the channel that, you know, maybe don't know how to do a lot of different patterns. They don't know how to do... Maybe they just learned how to knit, or not knit. Maybe they just learned how to crochet, you know. So I like to do a lot of beginner pat patterns on here. I have not had a single issue the entire time working this shawl up with splitting or knotting or any of that. Which makes me super happy. It's a really nice yarn to work with. As soon as I finish this row, hopefully I have enough yarn to finish this row. I'm playing yarn chicken, guys. Let's see if we win. Yeah, we're not going to win, I don't think. I think we're going to lose this round. We're definitely going to lose this round. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> we lost. That's fine. That's fine. And that's why I like this pattern because even though we lost, we just frog it back to the beginning. 
cut the yarn, tie it off, and we're done. We have this much left. All right, so this is what my colorway looks like. It starts with this beautiful rosy color. It moves into, let me, just my light a little bit because it's showing up a little bit cool toned and it's not. So this is like a rosy color. This is like a peachy color. And then it moves into like a beautiful, I don't even know what color blue I would say that is. And then it goes back to the peachy color. Then like this brownie, it's like a gray brown. And then back to the rose color. Very, very pretty. Very pretty. Very happy with that. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you make any of the things that I have shown in these tutorials this week, I really would like to see them. And because these are Premier Yarns, I mean, obviously I would like you to at sign and hashtag Cinnamon Stitches, but also at sign Premier Yarns and hashtag Make It Premier so that Premier can see what we're doing because that helps my channel, but it also helps them. So thank you so much to Premier for allowing me to use their beautiful pattern. Really appreciate that. And, um, I will see you in the next one.